Let's talk about placement of a photo mask on a glass piece. Now, you'll notice that this one is a compound curve, so it, it's gonna be a little bit trickier, but I've got some tips to be able to help you how to place that mask on this at a nice, even, and consistent rate. Now, a compound curve is a curve that not only goes down, but also out and back in. So, it's not a normal cylinder like a normal kind of uh, uh, whiskey glass or something like a tumbler. It does have a nice bowl shape to it which can be a little tricky, but the tips that I'll uh, show you later will help you with that application. First things first, we always clean our glass. Regular glass cleaner, and a lint-free towel. Microfiber towel works great. A lint-free towel is my personal favorite. Now just be uh, careful with any kind of wine glass or glass in general. It is a little bit fragile, so you don't want to be harsh with this. You don't want to drop it. You'll notice I have a carpet um, table here. That carpet actually absorbs any of the you know, bounce that I could have or any kind of drops. If you had a very hard surface like a tile type setting, uh, that glass could shatter easily. If you've ever done wine glasses or any kind of barware in general, you'll notice that you want to place the mask the same place every single time. Well, how do you do that? Well, you need to create some alignment marks on your glass in order to give you a point of reference that will help you mask them all the same way. In this particular case, I'm gonna take a water-based Sharpie, which is easy to clean off, that's why I'm not using a regular Sharpie. Take a roll of tape, turn my glass over, and run that pen right across my glass. By setting the pen on the tape roll and running my glass over it, I've got a nice, even, straight alignment mark. I'm gonna do the same thing with a different size piece of tape. Turn my glass over. Run my pen across it. And now I have two really nice alignment marks. If I had 10 or 15 of these to do, I can actually do the same alignment marks because the tape rolls aren't gonna change in size and I have a place and a point of reference to put that mask on every single time. So now we've got our alignment marks. I'm gonna use those same tape rolls to kind of prop up my, my wine glass here. You can certainly purchase a jig or something or make something to prop up your wine glasses, but in this case, I'm just gonna take the handy tools I have around the shop, put our pen away, and grab our mask. Now you'll notice this mask is pre-made, so I've already exposed, I've already washed it out, I've let it dry and I've applied this white backing paper. This white backing paper, which we call cover paper, is a way for you to preserve your stencils uh, really indefinitely. If you were to pull out this stencil a year, two years, five years later, this cover paper will not only preserve the adhesive backing on it, but will also keep it from sticking to other stencils that you have in that same bag. So really a great uh, tool for you to make stencils ahead of time and then use them as needed. So I've got my stencil here. I'm gonna place it on my glass, and you'll notice I cannot get it on exactly straight because the carrier sheet that's on the film, naturally on the film, is a stiffer plastic than the photoresist film underneath it. That will prohibit me from getting this on evenly on a compound curve like this. Now on a flat surface, I could obviously take that carrier uh, or that photoresist with the carrier still on it, place it down and then squeegee it and I'd have no issues. But on a compound curve like this, on a wine glass, something with that, that bowl shape, I can't do that. So what do we do? Well, let's remove the carrier by pinching a corner of my stencil, something where I can pull up that carrier without affecting the photoresist, separate the two, and now you'll notice I have a very flexible but fragile mask. I like to take it between my thumb and my fingers, get it nice and taut, and place it down. Now, I can pull all of my edges away from the center and get some compression down on the mask to get a nice bond. Perfect. 
On SR3000N uh, SR2000 films, the creases on the film will never have an effect on your sandblasting. The only thing you want to look out for is a crease that's inside your, um, your blastable area or the black area that on your print film, the clear area on the film itself. So you see I've got a mask on a glass on my curved surface, I've got my alignment marks. Now we're ready to tape. Take a few pieces. This is just normal painter's tape, nothing special. Since we're not going really deep on this glass because of the thinness of the glass, I don't need to worry about uh, the sand breaking through that painter's tape. We just want to get something on the outside. Great. Now what I like to personally do with barware and glasses is I like to take another piece of tape and go right over the top. What that will do is actually prevent the sandblast from going inside the cup as you blast. So blasting will actually come up and hit this rather than possibly entering the top of the glass and blasting what's inside. So we've got a compound curve, a wine glass, masked, taped, and ready to blast. And now we can go to our blaster, get a nice etch, and have this ready for our customer.